We'll call the fifth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the quote of the day? Thank you. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. Very good. Uh, please call the roll. Um, there are 12 present. All the person, Donahue, Van Akron, Berg, and Van De Weel are excused. Um, next would be the approval of the minutes. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mr. President. I move oh, to approve. Oh, I, I stand down. Um, <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. My bad. Okay. I'm a rookie. <laughs> the flowers are clouding my judgment. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The pollen counts too high up here. All right, Alder Person Bellinger. Thank you. Move to approve the minutes. Second. It's a motion and a second. Any discussions? Hearing those, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next, uh, resignations. City Attorney Adams. We do have uh, one resignation from uh, Alder Person Eldon Berg, uh, effective uh, June 2. Thank you very much. Mayor's appointments, I believe there are none. There is, a, oh. there is a mayor's appointment as well. Uh, Let's do a motion for the resignation. Do a motion for the resignation. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, move to accept and file. Second. Okay. Motion to accept and file. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mayor's appointments. Uh, as for mayor's appointment, uh, the mayor submits Cindy Dross to be considered for an appointment to the Joint Review Board as the LTC representative with the term expiring April 30 of 2016. That will lie over. Next we have a presentation from Amy Wilson of the Sheboygan Tourism. Update. Um, as you know, we generally get the numbers from the year before and in May during National Tourism Week, the first week of May. So we'll just review how 2014 went across the state and for our local area. Um, in 2014, across Wisconsin, visits, to or visits grew by 2% over 2013. Hotel room demand is up by 3.5%. The occupancy rates increased over 56%. Average daily rate is also up over 3%. And overall, hotel re revenues are up 7.4% across the state. Leisure travel comprises 88% of visitor spending. That's generally very consistent. Overnight visitors comprise about 67% of that. Um, day trips, and uh, I'm sorry, overnight visitors um, spend about 7.7 .7 billion across the state. Day visitors spend about 3.88 billion. Um, there were 102 point million visitors to the state, spending 11.4 billion in 2014. So visitors spent about 2.3 billion on lodging. That's an increase of over 7%. Um, more than 2.9 was spent on food and beverage. That's an increase of 6.4%, and the first time that food and beverage has surpassed lodging spending. Retail captured um, almost 2.3 billion in visitor spending. That's an increase of 2.4%. And visitor spending on recreation increased 7.8% to more than $1.5 billion. Um, and just to let you know, rec recreation increases at a greater rate right now for the last four years than all the other categories. And that's pretty much where we focus all our marketing efforts on in waterfront recreational assets. Um, so visitor spending since 2010 has increased $38.6 million um, in in our county. This is visitor spending for our county. So in 2014, <coughs> visitors spent 207.8 million. So in five years, that's almost a, well, a little over $38 million increase in visitor spending. Um, for room tax revenues, just for the city of Sheboygan, and this chart that you're looking at, this actually, what those numbers are, are the 70% of room taxes collected that comprise just the tourism budget. It's not the 30% that goes to the, general, um, rev to the general fund, and it doesn't include Blue Harbor. Um, so room tax revenues over the last five years have increased 49%. 2014, we had a record-breaking year in room tax collections, 
And today is the fifth anniversary, June 1st, since the tourism open office in the chamber, <laughs> since it opened. Um, so the city of Sheboygan collects about 40% of all room tax when Blue Harbor is included, about 40% across the county. If we go to the next chart, you'll see 2014. Um, every year we highlight in yellow what quarters are the record-breaking quarters in history, and in 2014, every one of them were. <laughs> so, um, however, we just received today the quarter one room tax for 2015, and that broke the quarter one record for 2014. So hopefully we're on another good um, revenue increasing trend. So the projections um, for the room tax projections that we turn in for the budgets every year, usually <coughs> ours come in in August. But in 2015, and as always, we project conservatively to avoid any risk and things we can't control, natural disaster, hotels starting on fire, et cetera, et cetera. So in 2015, we projected about 370,000. Remember, we have to project these before we know how we do in the year. About 370,000 to come into the tourism budget, um, following a three-year pattern that showed a mitigated average of 396,000. Um, but we will well be over that, as <coughs> you can see. So that's the update, if there are no questions. Great, thank you. All right, okay. thank you. Somebody's buzzing in. Nope, oh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Amy, with anything that's going on in Madison right now with the state budget, I read uh, some things that are possibly pending with how municipalities can spend their room tax dollars. Is that possibly going to have an adverse effect on us, or are we looking okay? It shouldn't affect us at all because the way our, our tourism board and our system is set up already complies with the state statute and we're already following the law that they're trying to improve. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Public forum, Madam Clerk. Okay, this evening, uh, first on the list is Jason Peters. Jason, if you could come on up. And I need your home address, please, Jason. It's uh, 1225 Kaufman Avenue. Okay, you will have five minutes. All right, good evening. I would like to give an update to the Common Council, the progress of the Army Foundation. <coughs> we have been working very well with the fin Finance Committee. They have given us some great advice. I would like to personally thank Alderman Carlson. Um, at the last historic committee meeting, he brought to light some miscommunication we had with another person in filing our 501c papers. They will be filed shortly, and I really want to thank him for this help. It's kind of, it's been a very nice experience working together and kind of going against head to head. Um, but tonight you will be voting on whether to follow the historic committee recommendation to place the armory as a historical structure. Landmarking locally protects the exterior and condition of the building. I want to stress, it does not guarantee that the building cannot come down in the future. For us, this is the first step in a process of setting a precedent that the armory is an important part of Sheboygan's past, but more importantly, its future. Our hopefully goal is the next step, it will be state and nationally landmarked, which will help us with grant money and tax credits. Last month, Alderman Theo and Alderman Damrell took a tour with me and Colin through the armory. And last week, Colin and Jason Smathers of Sheboygan Press, along with Jim Drugger, Drager, the head of Wisconsin State Historical Society, took a tour. Mr. Drager is, said, essentially, nothing majority is wrong except the building has been neglected and needs cosmic fixes. I really personally feel the condition of the building through a lot of hearsay has been blown out of proportion. If you talk to two aldermen that were there, it's a lot of cosmetic fixes. But again, tonight you will be voting on a recommendation from a committee that the mayor appointed. Uh, I'm learning a lot in this last 18 months coming here. And to me, going through all these different committees, the Finance Committee, the Historical Committee, the Parks Committee, these people put in a lot of time, just like yourselves. And to me, it would be a no-brainer for when you have four to two recommendation to landmark it. If you don't, it's a slap in the face of all the members of the Historical Committee. That's 
what we can do with that. Thank you, Jason. And next on our list is Deborah, is it Yochis? Sorry if I didn't pronounce it right. Close? Okay, good. And Deborah, I need your home address, please. 1633 Humboldt Avenue in Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Uh, my name is Deborah Yochis, and um, I have a company to call it a company called Tree of Life Properties and we recently acquired a property um, on North 11th Street that we would like to use for um, transitional housing, um, a faith-based program. Um, we also are looking at another property that is coming for sale on North 11th Street um, which is a five-bedroom home um, that we would be putting um, male non-offender or non-violent offenders in. Um, people need, um, oh, I'm so nervous. Sorry, I'm very nervous. Um, I, I do jail ministry and I've done it for a year and a half and these people come out, they have nowhere to go. And they need people to walk alongside them and guide them. And this is our mission is to just provide faith-based housing. Um, we have a curriculum. Um, and if you want to know more of that structured detail, um, I have someone here that can explain that. I don't know if anybody has questions for me. I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> so um, is there any, uh, I mean, the house that we would like to purchase is not currently on the market. It is, it is set to go up any day now, and we would like to purchase that and use that for a transitional living program for males. I don't know if there's objections you have questions so I'll stop there thanks Deborah Thank you, you did fine <laughs> did great anybody else that's it all right next on our mayor's announcements uh, on board docs you saw the resignation of uh, Alderperson Berg um, first I'd like to thank him for his past and, and current service um, we wish him the very best in his recovery and would ask that you keep him in your thoughts and prayers as we as he goes forward. Unfortunately, that means that we have a vacancy in District 1, um, Wards 1, 2, and 3. Uh, anyone interested in putting their name in for this position should submit a letter um, and resume to the city clerk at 828 Center Avenue or by email at susanrichards at sheboyganwi.gov. You can also find that uh, email address on our website um, by Friday, June 12th. Council will be voting on the new older person at our next meeting on June 15th, um, and there will be time allotted for any interested parties to um, speak um, at the council to the council before um, the vote. So, if you have any questions, please contact uh, City Clerk Richards. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. I have older person Bellinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, like to make a motion to accept and file all, all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolu resolutions and ordinances. Second. Okay. So, motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes. All right, motion passes. Next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Uh, Three point one, an RO by the Historic Preservation Housing Rehab Commission, to whom was referred RO number two ninety fourteen fifteen by the City Clerk, submitting a historical designation application. Sheboygan Municipal Auditorium and Armory recommends that the auditorium and the armory be designated as a historical structure and directs the Historic Preservation slash housing rehab commission to start the process per the ordinance for officially designating the property historic. Alderperson Thiel. I make a motion that we uh, accept and, uh, and file the RO. Second. There's a motion and second under discussion. Um, these aren't labeled right. Alderperson Carlson. Thank you. 
President, Hammond. I would, um, I, I'm going to be opposing this um, process, and I, I hope that everybody else joins me for um, one main reason. I don't think we need to put any unnecessary burdens on um, the future of the Armory. Uh, this committee, uh, be, the Committee uh, Historic Preservation, already placed a 90-day hold on it, and it actually killed a development, um, the only development deal that we had for this Armory. The bid process went out for 10 months. We, we've all known that there have been issues here for at least <coughs> two years now. We put out, like I said, a 10-month bid process. We only got one viable option. And then this committee effectively killed that um, project. Luckily, that project is still staying within the city. Um, however, it didn't solve the armory problem for the city. Um, this, this process would place some restrictions on the building, albeit it would be restrictions that we are putting on ourselves. But once again, I don't think we need to do that because um, in development deals, we all know that time is of the essence. So whether it's five days a week or a month or two months or even 90 days, it could kill something and I don't think we need to do that. We, we haven't gotten any real other options uh, for this project, so I wanna be able to just keep our options open and this will not allow us to do that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Alderperson Thiel. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as Mr. Peters uh, mentioned, uh, I went and took a tour of the armory. Um, I haven't been in there in many, many years. I was expecting, just from what I heard from everybody else, that this is a complete disaster inside. It's a mess. Um, does it need some work? Yes. But I was surprised that it wasn't as bad as I actually in, uh, really anticipated. Is there some areas inside there that are, are bad? Absolutely. Um, I think with some, if the right group can find the right funding, um, it, it can actually get back to what it was. I know some, some other people, um, persons haven't uh, lived here all their lives, um, don't know the history of the, of the armory. I have lived here all my life. Um, this is my hometown and I have some great memories there. Um, I think by, uh, making this a historical landmark or whatever classification it's called. Um, I think we're showing that we do value the historical areas um, in our city. And I know Alderman Collison said that we, uh, we killed the deal. Why I think we didn't really kill anything, I think we saved the building is what we did. Um, this destination or this designation um, protects the exterior of the building. Um, like he said, it doesn't, uh, say that somewhere down the line we don't get any offers or this group can't put something together or funding or whatever um, doesn't mean that somewhere down the line we couldn't vote where it would get taken down it, it doesn't uh, doesn't do that it just protects the exterior of the building and may help them get some type of grants down the line and help for some other designations so um, i'm obviously in favor <coughs> of this and i hope everybody else is also thank you thank you all the person thiel alderman bitters thank you mr president uh, well, not a sponsored tour. I also toured the armory, and uh, I'll let my inner engineer side speak out for a moment. It's not just cosmetic. The problems to that building are profound. The, it, outside of the, the, the leaking, the, the trashed roof, there are things, it, the moment you try to do anything with that building, is it ADA compliant? No. Is it anywhere close to being to that? No. Is there a sprinkler system inside? No. Uh, is, there a, uh, is there a working HVAC system? Yeah, but it only does heat and it's steam boilers. and. I actually looked at the two boilers. Only one of them is converted to a, a modern fuel. The other one's still coal. It, anyone who thinks, well, some cosme cosmetic changes and a little bit of money will whip this thing back into shape, not true. It's not going to happen that way. You, you're going to end up somewhere probably between five and ten million dollars to get this back to a viable 
public building. And I don't see us putting that on the backs of the people who got to pay it for this, our local taxpayers. I, someone proved to me wrong, but I don't see it. And actually the exterior of the building is part of what's causing the problems inside. It, there's leaking and there's water running through the exterior walls, trashing the interior of it. So, it, it, you know, I respect the, the Armory Foundation for all they're trying to do. But it's not as rosy as they make it sound. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bitters. Uh, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, during my last <coughs> meeting on the Finance Committee, uh, the uh, Armory Foundation came before us at that point in time, and it was agreed that they would take a tour and hire a um, architect and go through that facility with them and get a report back from an architect. Um, it's easy, you know, for uh, any one of us aldermen or in somebody with an, an untrained eye to go and, and, and look at something and. Uh, you know, whether it's cosmetic or it's major structural or, you know, significant issues, um, it's not as easy to see with an untrained eye. So I would like to ask the question, has an architect gone through it and has there been a report developed as to what the issues are of that building? Thank you. Okay. Not sure who would know the answer to that. Uh, Ms. Lurkey? Motion to open the floor to Ms. Lurkey. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Please. Jennifer Lurkey, 111 Highland Drive, Glenbula. Um, my name is Jennifer Lurkey. I'm owner of Legacy Architecture here in Sheboygan. I'm a historic preservation architect. My specialty is 75% of what our revenues are for the year. It's not something we dabble in, and we do preservation work all across the state. Um, I've been in the building twice in the last, uh, once most recently this past Friday, um, and I was also in the building last February, February 14, not February 15. Um, on both occasions, I was there with representatives from the Wisconsin Historical Society, and they were there on my invitation. Um, the first visit in February of 14, I was there with a potential client who was considering responding to the RFP, and uh, most recently I was in the building with the Armory Foundation. Um, I do have to say the building is very structurally sound. Yes, the roof is leaking. I saw no evidence of the walls leaking. There's one major roof leak on the southeast corner of the building that's causing the water to basically filter down through the entire building and into the basement. Um, I've heard rumors that the roof is collapsing, which does not appear to be the case. There's some plaster that has come down, uh, a very small amount of it, uh, due to the roof leaks. Roof leak is the primary concern with the building, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I have not been hired by anybody to do a report. I don't have any proposals out to do a report for anybody. I certainly have those capabilities, and I've done those on numerous buildings in Northeastern Wisconsin, but um, I have not seen any structural problems, I, and the major cause of the deterioration right now is the roof leaks, um, two of which I am aware of. Uh, there is some concern with the stairs on the northwest corner of the building, the foundation, um, has settled, it's caused some cracking with the concrete, but it's not the building itself, it's just the exterior stairs on the northwest side of the building. Um, as far as the landmark designation is concerned, several years ago we did work called an intensive survey report, and I don't know if you guys have access to it or have seen it. Um, the first edition of the report was issued in 2002. It was paid for by the city. I was the primary investigator of it at an well, I was employed at another farm in town. And the armory was identified as being potentially eligible for the state national register, um, therefore making it eligible for tax credits. Uh, 
So we, we've known that this building is eligible for quite some time. Uh, landmarking is different from eligibility though. And tonight we're here to talk about landmarking. So um, I did write a letter of support to have this property landmarked. It was identified in the intensive survey report. Um, landmarking is not gonna prevent you from bulldozing it in the future. Um, that 90 day stay is still gonna be in place whether it's landmarked or not. So I really see no um, very relatively few restrictions placed on this building if it's landmarked or not. Okay. I don't know if anybody has any further questions. Any questions on the architectural, Oliver, <coughs> excuse me, Oliver person Bollinger. Thank you, President Hammond. Um, would you feel comfortable giving a ballpark dollar figure as to what it would cost to redo the roof and get it ADA compliant and sprinklers and get everything? I, I should I mention mean, the ADA compliance and the sprinklers issues too. For existing buildings that are eligible for the National Register, you can use the International Existing Building Code, that is the building code that we use here in Wisconsin. That would not, depending on future use of the building, it would not force you to make that building ADA compliant. There is a ramp that leads to the first floor and the entire first floor is accessible. That's usually the baseline minimum for ADA accessibility in all public buildings and places of work. Um, so as of right now, the building meets all compliance standards. Um, as far as the- Depending upon what the usage would be. Uh, depending on what the future use of the building. There would be some, if the building would stay relatively in a similar use to what it's being used now, there would be nothing that would trigger, let's say elevators to be installed so that there would be accessibility to basement or the upper bleacher level. Um, there are provisions in our building code, we use them all the time. Um, and there are all kinds of public buildings in the city that are not accessible right now. Um, as far as sprinklers are concerned, it's an existing building, it's grandfathered in. Unless there was some major change of use that would happen to the building, nothing would trigger sprinkler systems. Um, so as it stands right now, you wouldn't have to worry about that. The numbers that I have seen from other contractors in town who have taken a stab at putting numbers together for this building have been in like a $5 million range, give or take. Um, that was also for spaceport years ago they were putting massive additions on the rear of the building they were doing all kinds of things so i personally have not put any numbers together for it i haven't looked at it um, in any detail whatsoever but that is a number that i have seen thrown out there okay thank you any other questions for miss lurkey um, before we move on okay thank you very much Alderman Carlson. Thank you. One of the bigger issues uh, that I have with this is the fact that the, um, I think we're putting the cart before the horse here. The Armory Foundation doesn't exist um, on paper. It's not a legal entity, and that's who filed this motion. There is no plan, there is no plan that has been presented to the city as of yet, and like I said, it's almost been a two year process. So once again, I don't think we need to go through this process because there is no plan out there. It's been almost two years. And uh, I guess according to a miscommunication, they haven't filed their 501c3, they haven't filed tax papers, even though we were told they did last year in a finance meeting. There are a lot of issues here, and I don't think we need to do this, to be quite honest with you, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Jose. Well, there are a lot of parallels. I don't know if this is working or not. Just speak up. Uh, there are a lot of parallels between um, Alderman Bitterstead and a, and a building I'm rather proud of, the Sheboygan Masonic Lodge. I am the senior warden of the Sheboygan Masonic Lodge. For those who don't know what that means, it means I'm the vice president. a bad state of repair that it would rain in the building. The, the roof was gone so far that it would rain inside the building and it rained outside. And we got some people together, um, got a support for it, and the building was restored. A new roof was put on. Countless thousands and thousands of hours were put in and uh, repainting the walls, the drywall, whatever needed to be done. Been there and in the last 10 years, it's a remarkable 
Council, after the building had been in what I think would be a worse state of repair than the R Wing, the Common Council voted to make that a landmark and historic building. The building is not ADA compliant. I sat on the, through the end of last year, for five and a half years, I sat on the board of the 501c3, the Historic Suburban Crown Lodge Building Foundation, which is different than the Crown Lodge. And several times there was talk of putting chairlifts in or elevators. Once you go down that path, once you do something, you can't undo it. The building remains not ADA compliant. As our lady architect here has said, buildings that are historic in nature, our grandfather's in, the lodge does not have a central kitchen. Somebody comes, has a wedding there, we have to carry their wheelchair down a few flights of steps to get them down to the dining hall. That's just the way it is. But it's a great historic building. As Walter Godot Kohler Sr., one of the governors of Wisconsin, was on the building committee. He was history not to be in Wisconsin. And I think the armory likewise has a lot of history, more so for the city of Detroit. I was seeing Marty Robbins play and Bob Hope perform before Alden Carlson was born. More Bob Hope than Marty Robbins. So I think it's a good move, like it's been said here, that doesn't represent something for the future to be done with the building. It doesn't prevent its actual demolition. You can't get somebody to put together a viable thing for it. So I'm going to vote. As I said, when I ran for office, I'm going to vote to preserve the historic building. Okay, thank you. Alderman Bourne, you're next. Thank you, Mr. President. Question, if this building is not designated a historical structure, that does not preclude Mr. Peters' group from coming through with a proposal to the Finance Committee, does it? No. And it doesn't preclude them from getting their 501 designation. The historical structure has nothing to do with that. No. Thank you. Alderman Bitters. Thank you again, Mr. President. With all due respect to Alderman Hussain and our architect speaker, in her comments, she mentions, well, you'd be grandfathered if it wasn't a change in purpose of the building. Well, the Armory Foundation, whether they're recognized as an actual foundation or not, their plan that the last plan I saw coming to the city talked about radical reuses for the building that as soon as you start remodeling rooms on the different floors and repurposing the main floor, it entirely could be suddenly not grandfathered anymore. There's a lot of other deeper issues in whether this could be used in the way that we're talking about. If you're going to keep it a basketball court, okay, but anything that you were going to do upstairs, it calls into question whether or not the plan that they came up with so far is any good or not. And I go back to Alderman Carlson's comments that you had two years of get anybody in here with a viable plan that we could act on, and that hasn't happened. So I don't have any problem with the nostalgia and whether we should keep this as historic building. Just realize what you're getting into if we pursue down the path of let's make this historic. It adds an extra hurdle if we ever did decide to do something different. 
That's all I have. All I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to mention that what we're voting on here today is landmarking a building. This isn't any discussion about if the Sheboygan Foundation is going to go in there, whether something else is going to go in there. What we're here to do is landmark a building. I think we need to remember that. And Welcome. Other person, Lassard. Thank you, President Hammond. I have a question for Attorney Adams. By landmarking this building, what restrictions does it have on the property and on us? You know, in short, uh, it adds another layer is what it does. I think uh, earlier during public forum, the comment was made that it doesn't prevent this, uh, the demolition of the property, and that is correct uh, as, as it is, uh, but it does basically add another layer of, uh, there, there's a time frame, there's a holding period during which uh, no action could be taken, and the Historic uh, Commission takes a look at that. Um, that to, to put it into a nutshell, that's what it does, is it adds another layer of let's look at this before we make that uh, decision to do these, a, a major demolition or a major project on the outside. Okay. Any other discussion? So we're going to have to keep it to Any other discussion from the other persons? Okay, there's a motion and a second to uh, accept and file um, recommendation of the committee um, to designate it a historic landmark. So um, by voting aye, you're accepting that it's a, or accepting the uh, resolution to make it a historic landmark. Or no, you're not. Does everybody understand what they're voting on? Great. Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Five eyes, six no's. Motion fails. 3.2 through 3.9 will be referred to various committees. Four resolutions. 4.1 is a resolution by myself authorizing entering into an agreement with Donahue and Associates for engineering services for the reconstruction of Pennsylvania Avenue from North 7th Street to North 5th Street. Alder Person Bellinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to suspend the rules. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Any objections? Rules are suspended. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you. Move to pass the resolution. Second. All right. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes. Motion carries. 4.2 resolution by myself authorizing the continuation of the self-insured workers' compensation program. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I move to uh, suspend the rules. Second. Any objections to suspending the rules? Hearing none, please continue. Thank you. Make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. It's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes. Motion carries. 4.3, a resolution by myself authorizing submittal of an Office of Healthy Homes and Lead Hazard Control Grant and approving the Memorandum of Understanding between the City, County, and Housing Authority. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Motion to suspend. Second. Any objections to suspending the rules? 
please continue. Thank you. Then move to pass the resolution. Second. Motion and second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Ten eyes, one no. Motion carries. 4.4 through 4.11 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, 5.1 and RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 101516 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. Recommends that the taxi cab uh, driver's license application number 6868 be denied based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license offense or activity, and his record as a repeat law violator. Other person Lassard. Thank you, President Hanneman. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and multiple seconds. Um, <laughs> under discussion. Um, the, he came before our committee and um, there was a number of citations that he failed to put on his application. Um, one standing out the most is um, he had a, a felony eluding that took two months for him to turn himself in and the police department did not recommend us approving this um, application. So I am asking for the support of this board. To Other person, oh, sorry. I should have asked. Is, yeah. Sorry, I apologize. Is Ben Klinsing here? He is not. Okay. Please continue. Okay. Any under discussion? Noten, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes. Motion carries. Five two and five three will be re referred to public protection and safety. 6-1 under ordinances, 6-1 through 6-4 will be revert, referred to various committees, which takes us to other matters. City Attorney Adams. We have three. Uh, the first one, 7.1, is a resolution accepting $239,459 in grant monies from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for Green Infrastructure Implementation at DeLand and King Parks. That will be referred to finance. 7.2 uh, is an RO submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2015 and June 30th, 2017. That'll be referred to law and licensing. 7.3 is an RO submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2016. That'll be referred to law and licensing. That said, we have concluded. All the person Bellinger. Move to adjourn. Second. The motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.